Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Kevin Mahal. I am a senior technical customer success manager here at TechSoup. And this session of Ask, Ask the Experts, focusing on AI prompting, or AI prompt engineering rather, we are joined by two wonderful people. And forgive me, Josh, if I pronounce your last name incorrect, Josh Peske and Kim Schneider of Roundtable Technologies. This is going to uh, be... Se lo hoy, si está descongelado. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to get in here and start muting some folks. Um, just an FYI as kind of a uh, warm up to this is cameras have been disabled, but microphones are on. If your microphone is on, we kindly ask that you mute it. Um, if the opportunity to come off of uh, mute and ask questions presents itself, we will encourage you to do so. We do have um, a series of canned questions as well that uh, were asked in advance, and we do want to address uh, those first. So with that, I am going to hand it over to Josh and Kim. And Kevin, just real quick, I don't yet have screen share permissions, so I think I need to get promoted to organizer or presenter, I think. Uh, that you do. Let me find it no here. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay. Hmm. But in the meantime, what we can do is <laughs> say hello to everybody <laughs> and uh, kind of start jumping in. So hello, everybody. Thank you so much for, for coming today. And uh, the last ask, ask the experts we had uh, a few weeks ago was fantastic, just incredible questions and great conversation. Uh, and that was ostensibly about ethics and privacy and transparency uh, around AI use, but it, it sort of uh, went off in a bunch of directions, which was great. Uh, today, we're focusing on prompt engineering and prompts, essentially how best to interact with uh, large language models um, in order to get the, the results you want, right? Get the output you want. And uh, thanks to Kim and to Microsoft, um, there's actually a huge update we get to share with you today <laughs> that I only learned about a half an hour ago, thanks to Kim, but have been playing with. And uh, it's incredibly cool and offers some, some really cool new functionality uh, within Microsoft Copilot. So we're excited to show that as well. And it looks like I do have the share permission now. So thank you so much for that. Um, and let's jump in. So um, I'll probably have to resize this, Kim. Let me know if uh, is, are we, we seeing the whole screen. Good. No, it looks good. looks good. Okay, great. So I am Joshua Peske. Hello, everybody. I'm my Tesla 3 CPO, which I'm happy to explain if anyone cares. Basically, I do a bunch of C-suite technology stuff. I work with Round Table Technology. Uh, I've been there for a very long time, and uh, Kim and I also have worked together for uh, even longer. Um, so I've been with Round Table about 10 years. Kim and I have been working together at various uh, organizations for 30 years, believe it or not, uh, all the time in nonprofit technology. In fact, one of the very first projects we did together was create the first ever website for a nonprofit that we were working at at the time, Fountain House. Um, and uh, that was back in like 1996, I want to say. Um, and so uh, that gives you a sense of our history. Um, anyway, let's uh, let Kim introduce herself. Go ahead, Kim. Hi, Kim Snyder, I'm VP of Data Strategy at Roundtable Technology. And yes, Joshua and I go way back. And um, let's just say for the last 30 years or so, we've been our passion is introducing nonprofit organizations to technologies in a way that's digestible, let's say, or demystifying tech, because it does tend to move very quickly. So um, I think we can go right ahead. Um, yeah. I do a lot of stuff in the world of data and data privacy, which does come up in this, even though the topic is AI. But um, so just a quick uh, today's agenda, we're going to go over a couple of slides just to kind of set the context and groundwork around what do we mean by prompt engineering. Um, and that'll be about, say, the first 15 minutes. And then at that point, we are going to transition into answering questions. Uh, we do have people have asked great questions, and I think even some questions that may help answer questions that are on, on other people's minds. So we've gone ahead and picked out a few of those, and we may even have a demo or two 
uh, for you while we answer those questions. And then it opens up to your questions. Um, the team at uh, TechSoup is excellent at reviewing questions and kind of getting them through to us as we're doing this. So please, by all means, ask your questions as we're going along. But, um, and we will hopefully get to answer a lot of them. So I think with that, I think we hop back. Hey, Kim, um, I'm not sure about other folks. I'm not sure I'm seeing your video or at least maybe, um, I don't know, Kevin, maybe you can let me know if I'm wrong and I'm just seeing the wrong screen, but um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm seeing your video, Kim. Yeah, we don't see the video. Uh, it is enabled, so. Really? Um, that is odd because I see my video. Okay. You see it now? No. Let's see. It's all right. We'll, we'll truck along. But, uh, Do you see it now? Or am I just? Yep. There you are. Okay. Success. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> I was here before. Trust me. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's talk first about um, AI prompt engineering and the kind of focus today. Um, so very quickly, we just want to go through some kind of basics of uh, prompt architecture, prompt engineering. Uh, those are fancy terms. Simple term is talking to an AI, right? How do you talk to an AI so that you get instructions out of it? One of the things uh, that's been really a great lesson about working with AI over the past couple of years is it's not so unlike working with people. But because there is no room to blame the other person for not understanding your instructions, it forces you to really think about what is it that I am asking for in a way that I find really helpful. And it's actually probably improved my ability to communicate with humans uh, as well um, and understand when I don't get something I want, probably it was because I didn't communicate very well. So uh, things to do are first, you know, tell the AI what role you want it to play? Are you a psychologist? Are you a nonprofit consultant? Are you a um, you know, physics researcher? Are you a mathematician, right? Give it a role and even a very specific role. Um, be very clear about what topic or task you need. Um, if you're asking it for outputs and want a particular tone or particular style, tell it, this is the style I want. Um, it can be very helpful to tell it the steps that will lead you know more likely to a successful outcome and then um, be very clear about what the output is and if you have a sample of that which we'll get to later um, providing one really good sample of the kind of output you want um, at least currently is a very good uh, technique for getting outputs you want and and one caveat we'll kind of say about all this is um, we're gonna I'm not gonna say it every time we talk about it but I will say everything we're talking about is interacting with these large language models or AI systems as they are right now. They're changing very rapidly as, uh, as we will talk about. Um, Copilot, which we'll be focusing on today, Microsoft Copilot, has some different conversation styles. They have uh, creative, um, uh, balanced, and precise. And these are basically, they're well, well named terms, right? So creative, it's gonna be uh, more creative and a little bit more variations in its output and will go out on limbs a little bit more. Balanced is kind of in between that. Precise and precise is a very conservative. It's going to try very narrowly to do the things that you want it. Very good to experiment with different styles with Copilot based on the kind of thing you're doing. If you're trying to like do a really funny and out there blog post, probably creative mode is going to be good. If you're trying to write like a an AI policy statement for your organization, probably balanced or even precise might be a better way to go. And, and those are things you can experiment with. Um, some really basic ideas where generative text prompts are really, really helpful and, and generally very low risk in terms of doing things. Uh, they're fantastic for brainstorming, for being a thought partner. So I need to come up with 20 ideas for something. Um, I have three ideas for something and I want to get some feedback on them. I've written this short essay or blog post. I'd love to get feedback on it. Uh, fantastic at these kinds of things uh, and getting started, you know, getting rid of that blank page for those of you who can have writer's block sometimes. Um, and any kind of short question can be a starting point. Really good for conversations. Uh, I absolutely amazed um, my folks and my daughter the other day. Um, she um, was asking a question about dimensions and was asking how time functions as a fourth dimension, what that means. And I was trying to explain it and realized I was kind of struggling. So I opened up 
um, you know, an AI on my phone. And I, this was one that I can interact with in an audio way. And I asked it to explain, you know, four dimensions. Um, so it could be understood by a fifth grader, uh, which I use all the time, this, this prompt, like explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader as a way of forcing the AI to break down the concepts in really understandable ways. It's incredible. I really encourage you to use that. All right, so uh, Kim, anything you wanna to add to any of this that I've gone through? No, I mean, one thing I just want to um, point out, one of our questions, actually, someone asked about technical skills and using AI. So one of the things that Joshua has been talking about is mostly about asking questions. This is largely prompt writing, even though prompt engineering is very technical sounding, it's actually a question asking exercise. And as you said, you mold it in many dimensions, but it's 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 about asking language. Yeah, and I forget what like a famous scientist it was Einstein or Feynman or got attributed to one of those. It said, you know, if I have an hour to solve a really hard problem, like I might spend the first, you know, 50, 55 minutes just figuring out what are the right questions to ask. Because if I can figure that out and and working with AI, I find very much like that. It's about figuring out the right questions. Yeah, of course, big, big disclaimer here. Um, AIs will make stuff up. They'll be wrong about things. Uh, if you don't know this, it's very important to know this. It's very important to understand that you have to validate uh, information that comes out of AIs because it might just be uh, a confabulation that it just made up. Okay, these are probabilistic statistical engines. Um, they are just predicting next words within a context, and those predictions can produce some unexpected results. And I'm sure we've read plenty of stories about that. Um, and here's a lovely sonnet composed by Copilot. All right, Kim, off to you with image prompts. All right. So, um, so generative AI is also great at visual, um, at, at creating visual kinds of content, right? So again, like Joshua said, brainstorming, experimenting, quick rapid testing of visual ideas um, can be great for testing out stuff around social media campaigns, promotional materials. You can also use um, generative AI to generate pictures of people that look pretty real most of the time. Okay. <laughs> We'll caveat. The whimsy is very much there in pictures, and uh, there was a lot of that on the news. So anyway, prompting for images in Copilot. Um, here's a kind of a, a formula that that I think um, you know where you give it information. So what you know, describe what kind of thing you're looking for. Is it doing something? Is there, and then is there a particular visual style you want it to use? So in this case is you know, an adjective plus a noun plus a verb plus a style, right? A curious frog analyzing data in a comic book style. Okay. Yeah. And with that style one, maybe avoid blatant copyright violations, like yes. in the style of a Banksy uh, portrait or something like that. Yeah. No, I, that that comes up in. Oh, uh, there you go. Sorry, Kim. I jumped your slide. Ding, ding. That's know? fine. Um, it's yeah. it's worth mentioning twice. And in fact, AI doesn't let you do it anymore. So the types of things to include in a visual um, type of prompt is, um, you know, vibes, right? So a mood or a feeling that you want, right? Um, you can ask for different media. You know, you can ask for photography. You can ask for a high resolution photograph. You can ask for taken by a Nikon DSLR, blah, 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 with, you know, F2 point, whatever. Right? I forget my photography, but you can ask for close-ups, wide angles, things like that. Illustrations and art history. So here's the big caveat. And actually some of the AI, and, and as Josh mentioned, it does, it's changing and learning all the time. So it changes a little every day, right? Or, or as we're working on it. So one of the things that's, that's become much more restrained is the ability to, to request a specific artist style. Like give me this in the style of a Picasso, right? It's not just living artists. It's also certain artists' estates have really come up against this. So you don't want to say like, give me this image as Picasso would do it, as much as saying, you know, if it's cubism you're after, let's say, you can say in a cubist style or in the, you know, do something in the style of a certain period in time, like 17th century watercolor. 
You can also ask for the medium, right? Watercolor um, and uh, wood, you can ask for claymation looking visuals. So, and it's really fun to experiment. So I think, you know, and that's one of the things that is also really important around just AI prompt engineering is not so much about technical skills, right? But it is about experimenting and getting comfortable experimenting back and forth and seeing what you get. So I think um, that's it on images, similar principles. Yeah, and just we're almost done with the slides. We're gonna get right into the questions. We just wanted to kind of give some basics and we're also actually answering through these slides a number of the, the kind of questions that in various ways were asked multiple times by audience members. So we're trying to get some of the, the most asked questions just covered in this. So uh, advanced prompt techniques, there are literally thousands, maybe tens of thousands, maybe millions of very, very sophisticated prompts that are very, very specific for purpose. So we're not going to obviously go into all of those. So what we are going to share are what we would consider to be some of the more advanced prompt techniques that are very flexible, that, that can be used for lots of different purposes because they're effective and can be um, uh, used in lots of different ways. And we're, we'll provide you with, with samples of all of these that you can go and, go and use and play with. So one is a chain of thought. Um, and there are a couple different ways of doing this. Um, one is super simple, which is basically just telling the AI, uh, before you start doing this thing I'm asking you to do, I would like you to break it down step by step and maybe even tell me what your plan is um, and let me say, yeah, that sounds good before you proceed. Um, it's been pretty well demonstrated that this will tend to produce higher quality outputs most of the time, although it does take a little longer because the AI has to go through that and you have to review it. Um, so that's a chain of thought. And you can also actually give it the steps yourself if you know what those steps are. Uh, and that can be part of your prompt architecture. Uh, the, another term to be familiar with is the idea of zero shot, one shot, and few shot. And this is super simple. Okay, if I want it to produce a blog post for me that is 500 words and follows a specific, let's say, five paragraph format, right? introduction, you know, three basic points, and then a conclusion, right? A zero shot would be, I don't give it any samples. I just tell it, this is the kind of output I want. Good luck. A one shot is I give it exactly one sample that's exactly the way I like it and say, here's a sample of the kind of thing I want. All right, and a few shot is I give it maybe three or four or five or 10 or 100 samples, um, and then it will look at all of them and try to do that. My experience, Kim, tell me uh, what you find, and I'm also the audience, please share with us your experience. I find one shot most of the time to work the best out of these. If I have a really good sample of the kind of thing I want an output for, um, the AI does a really good job replicating that for some new thing um, that I'm asking for. Kim, does that? I, I would agree, yeah. And, and the general consensus that I hear, right, you think, more shots, the better, right? The more examples. But one of the things that I keep hearing and keep experiencing myself is if you load it down with too much information, you can confuse it. So if you, it, you're you better off giving it one really good example or really close example to what you want. Yep, and that, that's what I've found. Um, and the last one that I wanna talk about is this idea of tree of thought. This is probably, even some of you who've used AI may not be familiar with this one, even if you knew the other terms we were talking about. Uh, tree of thought's very interesting. It definitely takes longer than the other ones. And this is where you actually, and well, we have a sample of this as well. Um, you actually ask the AI to create personas and then have those personas um, kind of debate amongst themselves uh, which of the solutions is best or even generate ideas and then debate them amongst themselves. So for example, I might say, you know, I want ideas for how to incorporate um, AI into my nonprofit organization. Um, I would like you to generate, you know, five to 10 ideas. Um, and I would like uh, you to generate them. And, you know, one person is going to be an expert outside consultant in AI. Another person is going to be one of my nonprofit, you know, program staff. And another person is going to be a board member of our nonprofit. And I would like you to have each of those personas generate, you know, three ideas. I'd like to then have you have those personas debate about those ideas 
and provide rankings of which idea is the best based on each of their different perspectives. This is a very interesting way to have um, the large language model kind of uh, take in these different perspectives. So that's, um, that's one that I've played with with some success at, at different times. Uh, we've got, um, Kim, will you drop that in the chat for everybody, the, the prompt um, template that, that we're gonna share? I think one you of the tech it? room, I think one of the tech soup crew will drop it in. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to show some other ones as we go through and, um, and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So I think I will stop sharing at this moment and then I'll, I'll sort of reshare my screen, Kim, as we go through other questions. All yeah. Right. So, well, actually, since you're on the topic of that, um, that template, um, it's probably a good time to go ahead and show it because one of the, we received a of questions along these lines, but this is probably the most clearly asked and kind of general. How to tailor the most impactful AI prompts that align with our organization's mission? Okay. okay. So, so you, let me, um, oh, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, no, I'm just saying so. And, and a number of people ask this of kind of like, how can we create a prompt that gets what we want and has our tone to it, right? Has our, um, yep. so the, I believe our template is designed to do just that. It is. And let me, um, let me reshare my screen. So let me come back here. Um, let's see, maybe I'll just share. Can I just share the whole Chrome thing? I can't do that. All right. We'll just, I'll just bounce it around then. Um, so let's go right into Copilot. Okay, so here we are in Copilot, and I'm going to jump right into this new feature that, for those of you who don't know about it and use Copilot, I'll uh, be very excited, which is Notebook, which many of you will see um, if you go to Copilot um, in, your, uh, in your browser, you will see this little notebook up here on the top, and you can kind of click over to that, which is just new. This is the thing I literally just discovered a half an hour ago. And um, the first thing that is super interesting about Notebook, and I have my little annotation tool, if you look down in the bottom, if you see that blue kind of uh, uh, button in the left top of where it says new topic, just to the right of that, you'll see I have a whopping 18,000 characters that I can put in here. Look at how long of this prompt that I put in over here on the left. And I've still only used under a quarter of what's there. So I could have something four times as long as this. And so what I'm doing here is I'm telling it, you know, this is who I am, right? Uh, I'm telling it, here's an example of my writing. I'm telling a little bit about my audience. I could obviously be much more specific here. Okay. I'm telling it who the AI is. I'm telling it when I give it tasks, what I want it to do. There's that um, chain of thought, take a deep breath, consider the request in full, convert that into a step-by-step -step plan. Say, if you have questions, you're going to ask me up to five questions. Tell me what assumptions you're making. Um, this is something that, that's a prompt that's evolved for me over time that I've just found to be very effective at doing complex tasks. Then um, I tell it um, what format I want it in, which is that I'm asking for it in Markdown. All right, um, this is a really cool thing that I like, which is after a response, tell me for further explanation and give me great follow-up questions that are thought-provoking. I find this very helpful. And then I've given it the chain of thought where I say, I want to develop an effective strategy uh, to begin ethically using AI. I've told it, um, you know, I want a uh, board member, an executive director, and an outside consultant a sign of probability of success and a confidence level and for each solution deep in the thought process, so on and so forth. And here's the output um, that Copilot has given me. So um, the board member, um, so it came up with AI assisted content creation and outreach, kind of goes through this. Um, and all of this, of course, I can export as Word or PowerPoint. And the nice thing here is that I can make changes over here on the left and then just click the little arrow and it reruns the prompt. So it gives you a little bit more of an iterative way of working through prompts. So if I was trying to get something that was really in the tone of my organization, I would take the time to create a prompt that includes all of the things I need about who my nonprofit is, who our audience is, or the audience for this particular task that I'm doing, an example of what our tone is, our style, right? 
those things and then give it the task and be very clear on that output. And now that you have notebook, that could be 16,000 characters long, which gives you a lot of room to play with and you can iterate back and forth. So, yeah, and it just went up from 4,000, which, you know, um, which is a lot. Um, so, you would keep these kinds of prompts that have worked well for you. Like, you can always just copy and paste those into a document that you keep, and you might use certain prompts for different um, purposes. Right. Yeah. And EJ uh, asked, can I use Copilot on my Apple products or not? Um, EJ, I don't know if I should say this on the Microsoft TechSoup, but I, I'm on a Mac and it works <laughs> fine. <laughs> and I use it on my iPhone. So. Um, uh, so, so here's a, a, a question that I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that was also submitted. Okay. So related. So hold on to everything you've learned up till now. Are you um, going to want me to share anything here, Kim, or are you going to share? No, this is more, okay. more just okay. to talk through. Right, I'm trying to take, so it's a two-part question. I'm trying to take existing content, say a blog post, turn it into an email copy. What's the best way to feed that content to the AI tool? I would say feed it the way you saw Joshua feed an example of his writing. And you literally tell it, like, I want you to be you know to uh you are a professional writer and copy editor i would like you to transform this content that i'm going to give you and i would like it in an email and you give it the type of tone if you have an example if you have something about the audience for which that email is going you know um you know you could say i need it to be more professional and um you know sound more formal you can do things like that or friendly um and then the uh, second part of that question, which I think is really important, like kind of that, that I want to, a misunderstanding that I want to clarify is, is what about training an AI tool on my organization style and messaging guidelines to minimize editing requirements to make sure the results are on brand? Here's the thing. You think as you're writing and working with this tool, this thought partner, right? It kind of feels like an intern that you've brought. The longer the interns there, the better it gets your style. It kind of doesn't work that way. Okay. AI tools are very session based. So it's remembering in that given session what you've told it. Right. So it's not re going to remember tomorrow. Oh, yeah, this is Kim and she does this and that. So you, that's why it's really good to have a library of prompts that works well for different situations that you develop in your organization. There are tools coming out. Um, uh, I think uh, Copilot Studio, which uh, does will cost more, but that will allow you to kind of build custom, like kind of uh, little AI modules to add. And those, you'll have a better chance of being able to then get it to be shaped in a certain way for every question that you ask it. But right now, the tools that we're showing, as we're showing them today, it's not remembering anything like, um, you know, about you, even though it seems like it should. So, so next question for you, Josh, this is another demo on the tree of thought prompt. I think that's helpful. And this is great for like marketing campaigns and things. If you're, you know, if you want a focus group, I just saw someone ask that question. It's kind of like having a focus group. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, A, for noticing uh, Clippy. Clippy's helping us out today. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate that. We also have the, uh, the Ministry of Silly Walks for any uh, Monty Python fans. Um, so, uh, Let's see, I think I think we kind of demonstrated that one, right? The last prompt okay. I had was kind of the chain of thought. Um, I could certainly do another one. What I was gonna do, if if it's all right with folks, is um I was gonna just show another prompt that I will that I will share with everybody in the chat as well, which is an AI tutor prompt, um, which I think can be kind of fun. So I will drop that in as well, and then I will share my screen. Is that all right, Kim? If I just quickly sure. kind of do that, yeah. Because this is one that I that I find really fun and, and also potentially powerful for folks. Um, so uh, I just shared the the prompt that I put on the left, which um, I I got from uh, a wonderful writer and professor at Wharton called named Ethan Mollick, who has a mm -hmm. wonderful Substack that he writes about, um, which is uh, one useful thing. Could not recommend it more highly. Um, and 
So this prompt is one that he wrote. There's lots of these out there. So um, basically it, it just, you know, says, hi, I'm your AI tutor and I'm here to help you with any questions you have, so on and so forth. Now this one actually, I realized, won't work well in, in the notebook version. So I'm actually gonna move that over here um, and put it into the regular co-pilot where I can have an ongoing conversation. So notebook, again, you're, it's one prompt. So you're iterating it like that. You can't, you can't do a sequential kind of thing with notebook. So notebook is more for one-off kind of things, but allows you to do it incredibly uh, comprehensive. So does anyone have a topic they want me to ask the tutor about? See who puts it in the chat first. I'll, I'll take any topic as long as it's uh, safe for a webinar. Um, does anyone have a topic they want to talk about today? Um, let's see if we'll give it a minute. All right. Um, do, do, do. No one coming in with a topic? Event strategy. All right. Thank you, S. All right. So uh, I will do a nonprofit event strategy. Let's see what it does with that one. All right. It's going to think about it. It's a topic that covers how nonprofit organizations can plan, organize, and execute successful events. Am I a high school student, college student, or professional? All right. I'm just going to answer these for everybody. So I will say I'm a professional and it's going to truck along. Notice that Copilot is dropping little uh, links to the resources that it is uh, using to provide these answers. Um, really important to understand that the quality of these responses sometimes is dependent on um, you know, how good the responses are. So I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but you can see it's just going to, from this point forward, now that it's gotten this first instruction, the AI tutor instruction, it's just going to um, you know, keep going. Did I share the right tab, by the way? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, okay, great, great. Okay, just making sure. All right, so I'm, I'll stop there, but uh, okay. hopefully that. So long as you are there and in, oops, and in creative yeah, yeah. mode, someone did ask right here, an example of running a prompt for AI generative image creation. And, and that person's name was Josh. Um, okay. So is there any particular image, Josh, that you'd be interested in seeing? Not to put you on the spot. You're asking me or asking me, Josh? No, no, who Josh. Josh. Josh, Josh. you asked in the chat. Yeah. Any image you want to see, Josh? Again, save for a webinar, please. We don't need to put you on the spot. You can always. And Kim, I might defer to you on this one. I consider you much better at image prompting than I am. So, uh, intergenerational mentor relationship. Oh, nice. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So, Kim, help me out. Oh, okay. So I would say, okay, so for an intergenerational mentor relationship, okay, so that's a nice one. Um, I would say now intergenerational, I'm assuming that's a young and an old person. So uh, please make me, and we're going to ask for a photograph, but in a, we can ask that. Okay. Please make me um, an image for, well, actually, why don't you send that one through first and just see what it does? Okay. Okay. And then you can start to get specific you can start to ask for something like, give me an image, you know, of a young uh, girl, you know, of a girl, of a woman in her 20s working with an elderly man, you know, at a computer, uh, you know, or vice versa, uh, not to be ageist here, um, and um, do it in a photographic style. Sometimes okay, I repeat that. Um... Like an image. Okay, okay, image of an intergenerational mentor relationship. Go ahead. That's what it gave us. So give me. Yeah. So let's say no, we actually wanted a, a somebody in their twenties. Um, uh, image of an intergenerational mentor relationship showing um, a young man in his twenties. Okay. Working with. Okay. A woman you know, a woman in her 80s. Okay. You know, okay. at a picnic table, let's say. Okay. You know, uh, in the style of a Kodachrome photograph. Okay. Off we go. Um, while it's doing that, we can kind of take a look at these ones in larger view. So this is how these came out. Um, kind of so funny. Black and white. That's kind of 
it made black and whites and it made them all uh, females and all uh, white people except for one Asian girl, which is interesting. Um, and this is certainly a... <laughs> all right. So now we got it a little bit differently. I wouldn't say the photographs. Well, I guess that's kind of Kodachromy. Um, and now we got a bit more diversity, which is very nice to see. Okay. Okay, and, the, and so you can keep on iterating. You can also ask for an illustration, right? So here we're asking for a photograph. You can ask for an illustration. You can ask for a watercolor, um, et cetera. Oh, yeah, AIs can mess up people's hands, although they're getting better. AIs also in images can mess up text, which I think is counterintuitive for a lot of people. Um, it is getting much better, but it's. Um, it can, can really misspell words. Um, and that's with, with all of the different systems. And Josh did get back to us. So we'll say of a child being picked up uh, by their parents in a small African school. So we'll see what we get from that one, Josh. Now, right. some students can get some, you know, bias warning, but. <laughs> Yeah, all the AI systems are having various challenges around, um, you know, reinforcing stereotypes in image creation and, um, you know, doing all sorts of nutty things. So you can see we got really different results here um, before and quite a bit of variety. Um, that one's lovely. Um, lovely. Yeah, it's interesting that we got two that are kind of cartoon style, like, like um, and two that are very photorealistic. Kind of interesting, All right? Neat though. So Josh, I, I hope that you found those helpful um, and we can certainly do that. All right, um, so uh, what's next, Kim? So I think, I mean, some people did ask and I've, I've seen some questions float by in the chat. We, we're ready, um, TechSoup team, to start taking some of the live questions that might be flying by. Um, but oh, we can do the fun one. <laughs> Well, before we do, the, <laughs> uh, we can show you how they're, well, one thing they tend to mess up on. Um, someone did ask for an infographic. Um, right. Yeah, well, I think we have to, Kim. I think we've got to do right. the. Uh, right. right. So, it's, so doing, uh, yeah. this on, is going to be a fail, and it's going to be a big one. And this has nothing to do with Copilot and everything to do with large language models in their current state. All of the large language models will do what we are about to see. So. Um, we are going to ask, um, can you create um, an infographic? Please create a detailed uh, infographic showing ROI, operating cost over net income percentage of funds and operations, calculate the total cost of a project and output. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, uh, for a multinational nonprofit organization. And I don't know if this is like the 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 best. Okay, so we'll we'll see how this comes out. Um, but uh, someone asked this, and and Kim and I knew this in advance, and we we tested this beforehand. Hopefully, uh, it will do what we expect it to do, which is produce some um, infographics that are um, not always that that helpful. Um, <laughs> So, um, and you'll, you'll see when we Notice, it's it's telling you like what ROI is, which it's much better yeah. at than creating that infographic. It's 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 stalling. <laughs> kind of chain of thoughting itself, right? Sort of saying, I need to uh, think about this um, and make sure that you understand the infographic. Thank goodness it's going to tell us all this. All right. Okay. I'm not sure it's going to give another thing that that uh, that AIs are really really bad at, and I'll I'll try this as well. Is uh, where's Waldo? Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> not you, it's not giving you the infographic in this case. Yeah, no, it's it's getting there. Okay, all right. Someone did ask. Uh, you know, uh, someone would like help making an image for STEM science camp for kids. It's a nice. Okay. We can work on that. All right, here are our fantastic infographics. That really, I think, 
<laughs> yeah, that, that definitely helps me understand ROI net to bound. This one's even better, I think. Um, and this is, I, I have not figured out how to get some methods that are Josh, any different. Pardon? We don't see a close up. Oh, you don't? It didn't zoom in? No. Oh, interesting. I wonder why not. Um, I clicked in on it. Um, I'll stop sharing and I'll reshare and see if it shows you. Uh, interesting that it wouldn't show you close up. Why don't we do, I'll just do the entire screen and then hopefully that'll work. Sorry, Kim, you're now going to see yourself for a little bit. And we'll go back to the palette. Now, does everybody see it? Ah. That, that looks, yeah, see. I mean, that really clears things up for me. I think we've got $2 <laughs> of return on investment, which appears to be 90% of, and then we have 9% of our OFI, Something. whatever that is. And then it looks like <laughs> there's a person sitting underneath $3 signs. And this is exactly what I get every time I- All of them do it, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> and they all do it, yeah. So this and is not, not an indictment of Copilot at all. No. Okay. Um, and um, someone did ask about, oh, uh, there's me again. Um, someone did ask about like, what are some of the, the, the low tools? And there are, you know, uh, Copilot, uh, you know, is obviously the tool we're talking about today. There's also ChatGPT, which comes in a ChatGPT plus um, version. Um, yep. And, you know, Claude AI um, and uh, Google just released uh, newly named Gemini. Uh, what, what's very nice, and I would say this even if this wasn't a Microsoft-sponsored uh, webinar, um, is that with your, if you if you're a licensed Microsoft user on any of four licenses, a uh, three six uh, Microsoft uh, Office E three license, E five license, Business Premium or Business Standard, I believe, um, all of those, all right, um, include um, the. Uh, hang on a second. Um, you're protected. Um, and so you can see, because I'm logged into a Microsoft account that has an E3 license here, um, my chat is protected. And if you click through to this, it will give you all the details um, around the privacy and, and what they're doing. But essentially, it's saying, um, as I read this anyway, if anyone from Microsoft is on and wants to correct me by all means, but um, it, it's basically saying, you know, if you're already, if the data that you're using to interact with the AI is already in your 365 tenant in OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, Word, Power, you know, whatever, you're not introducing it to anything new by using it with your licensed Copilot version, right? It's protected by all those same things. That is a big deal, all right? Mm -hmm. and, and Microsoft is currently one of the only companies that's doing that on what's not quite free because you need a licensed 365, but since most of you already have that, um, it's essentially a free AI tool that's available to you and has data protection. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and uh, another hey, question. Hey, Kim, this is Janet from TechSoup here. Oh, we did have a question from uh, Josh, actually, the other Josh. Um, and, and maybe this is around the best practices, but um, so would you suggest starting with vague prompts and move towards what you are looking for with specific through con uh, continual prompts? It's kind of like what you were showing us a little bit before, um, but yeah, maybe you could talk about the best practices there. Can you repeat that, Janet? I'm not sure I understood that question really well. What Josh, did he write it in the chat and I can go find it? He did. It's okay. it's around yeah, starting with a vague prompt and maybe going and adding continuous details to create what you want. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, so that's an interesting question. I see it. Thank you, Janet. Um, so Josh asked. So do we suggest starting with vague prompts and move towards what you are looking for with specifics through continual prompts? Kim, do you want to answer that first, or do you want me to take that on first? My inclination would be no. If if I have, look, here's the thing. I would start with a vague prompt if I have a vague idea, if I'm not quite sure. And I have certainly many, many times gone to an AI tool to ask for general vague ideas about something. But if I know what I want, I will give it that in the very beginning so that then when I'm fine tuning it and continuing to, to iterate with the AI, that it gets me closer and closer to what I want. So that's my inclination on that. I agree with you 
Yeah, it's a great brainstorm partner, though, if you're not quite sure. Right. Um, so uh, any other questions, Janet? Um, I also if, see from Sarah, um, mm -hmm. can you create coloring sheets with Copilot? Yes, I, I, am, I just prompted that now so we can see how it comes out. Um, now, you're not seeing, you're, you're sharing your whole um, desktop? Yeah, because I, otherwise it seems to not zoom up the, the things. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, okay. It's just smaller. because. Oh, I can try doing it again. It wasn't, uh, just when I did it that way, it wasn't uh, zooming the photos for reasons I'm not clear on. We'll see if it does it this time. Tell me if the, when it gets larger when I click on it. So, yeah, that's pretty good coloring page. I mean, not... Now, if you wanted it for like a like a six year old, you might have less detail. I can certainly try that. While while that's happening, one of the questions that someone asked had to do with using prompt engineering for automated automated replies. That is something, that's something I'd actually avoid, okay? Because one of the, and, and in our last class on um, AI risk. Unless it's extremely low risk. Like um, so low risk that it almost doesn't exist. That's still hard for a six year, I don't know, maybe I'm not good at coloring, but. That, that does not look like a child. That looks like a dog child. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but that was not bad. Not too bad. All right. All right. Anyway. Um, Short answer is yes. I think you might need to do a little tweaking, but yeah. Um, any others? Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, short answer around automated. Um, so credit to uh, George Weiner of Whole Whale uh, for this term, but real shorthand. Okay. First, not final human in the loop. So what that means is when I'm using AI systems, I am is not the final draft that comes out of an AI and a human must be in the loop. If I am allowing an AI system to do automated replies that are not reviewed by human and those are going to humans, in my view at this time, that is irresponsible. Unless, unless it is so low risk and you are disclaiming a million times that like, hey, this thing may give you bad information. Yeah, because it can, you know, there, there, there are unhappy stories about that. Yeah. Um, Janet. If you, Jan, yes, you can download all the images. Um, don't know about dimensions and file formats for the image. I can certainly try that. Do you know that, file Kim? Format, no, dimensions right now, I think with Copilot, you get a square. It, like any minute now, you can probably ask it for a 16 by 9, but right now that it, it is generating square images. Um, some of the other tools, you can give it dimensions. It's always going to come in as a, a PNG file. Yeah, I'm asking, it says I cannot provide the images for download in any format. I can only create and display them for you. If you want to save the images, you can take a screenshot or download them. So, sorry. We also have another question from Crystalline, and this is more about understanding um, how AI generates um, their images. Um, but she's asking if we type the same exact prompt to create an image in both Copilot and OpenAI or ChatGPT, will they create the same image? No. Nope. In fact, even if you paste the same prompt into the Copilot over and over again, it will make different images every time. This is the kind of magic of AI systems. They're they're always generating it um, from this probabilistic statistical model that they're doing, so it's always new. Um, and it's always changing because yeah. people are always using them. They're very dynamic. So I know we're we're uh, we're flying without a net. I was playing with this just a or or. or a, Perform without a net. I don't know what the right term is here, Kim, but I'm um, I'm gonna play with. Uh, I'm gonna show us something else again. So I've got, um, unless Janet, we've got other questions we want to hit, but I wanted to show now that we've got this notebook function in Copilot, um, something else we can do that's pretty neat. So um, there's a there's all sorts of free 
data sources you can download. Okay, what, what I have is something called the IMDB Movie Database, which is just like something I used from way back in the day to um, help me learn like how to do pivot tables and things like that. And it just has names of movies, has a bunch of data in it. So what I'm gonna do is in my notebook where I have a lot of context, so this um, uses up the whole context. I'm gonna delete some of it and I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. You see, I've almost used my entire context window here. And I'm gonna say, um, please tell me about this data. Stop responding and let's go. And when I was playing this, oops, okay, let's start over. Like I said, flying without a net, but hopefully it'll work. All right, we'll try this again. Um, it, it was doing a pretty decent job telling me about this information and then giving me some options to ask questions of this data. Um, so just pasting in, and this is a CSV file, so I'm just pasting in basically text data. It's figuring this out all by itself, just looking at that data. Okay, so it's saying it appears to be a data set of movies. Each row represents a movie with the following attributes, right? Really nice breakdown here, right, of, of what this data looks like, and then gives me some ideas of what I could do. And now I could start to ask some questions. I could ask questions about like correlations between different data points um, or things like this. Um, this was not previously something that I was able to do very successfully with Copilot because the context window is so limited and you didn't have the ability to upload. Um, giant CSV files, but now that I have this context window of 18,000, um, you know, as long as your data set isn't too large, um, it's it's something you can definitely play with there. So I just wanted to show that because I think data analysis, the ability uh, to do advanced data analysis uh, using these tools is one of the most exciting aspects of them. Uh, it's really like a superpower. Yeah, and unlike infographics, it can actually do data visualizations really well. And that's those are the kinds of features I'm looking forward to seeing as they as you know Microsoft rolls out more capabilities in um, Copilot for Excel and things like that. Um, again, these are all works in progress, and it still is early days. Yeah, and uh, Marina asks a great question. How inside, how um, reliable is that data you produce? So what I have found so far, Marina, working with large language models, um, there's something called RAG, um, Retrieval Augmented Generation, I want to say is what it stands for. It might be something else. But it's essentially um, a technique by which you're saying, here's like a set of data, you know, to the AI, to Copilot and saying, I want you to answer the questions I'm asking, but only of this data. I don't want you to get data from anywhere else when you're answering this question, because of course they've got their entire training thing and they can browse the internet and all that, right? So RAG is, is are different techniques for doing that. This is on the more sophisticated side of, uh, of prompt architecture, right? Um, so in Copilot Studio, Right, you'd have much more control over uploading the data you want and then configuring the prompt and testing it to make sure it's doing it. If you're doing it like this, Marina, I would say you definitely would want to go do some spot check validation. So do some easy things and see if it seems to be giving you correct answers or just making them up or giving correct answers, but from some other data set that isn't the one you just uploaded um, before you went and published anything. Again, first, not final, human in the loop. Thank you, George Weiner. Yes, uh, oh, I did get it right. Retrieval augmented generation. Very Thank good. you. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Any, um, Janet, anything else? Nothing from the chat, but we did have a few questions that came in previously that maybe we have some time to check in on. Um, let's see. Um, how about... Uh, do you have any advice on getting the tone in language to reflect um, an organization's voice or or language guidelines? Absolutely. Um, so I'll share. Um, let's see. Hang on a second.
And some um, some folks had uh, commented that the template that we shared didn't have that full uh, that had the prompt that we wrote before we discovered notebook. So we will um, go ahead and add that to the prompt strategy template that then we'll use the same download. And when Janet, you'll be sending out um, a follow up email with this that and so folks can have the link and we'll give you both of those prompts. Correct. Yeah, we'll we'll be sending out the recording and, and as well as this um, this document as well. OK, great, because, yeah, I mean, Microsoft like quadrupled the capacity <laughs> right before this. Well, actually, it didn't happen right before this class. But we discovered it then. So are you doing? A yeah, so I'm, I'm giving a couple of ways that I would solve this problem. So um, example of desired writing style. So I'm just pulling this from my other one. So um, if I uh, do that there, so All right, so what one way that you could do this right is to one shot it, so to speak, which is that within this larger you know prompt strategy template that we give you right i'm giving identity and purpose and saying um, who the AI is i'm giving it a job. Um, i'm then going to go ahead and give it an example of a desired writing style right, the other thing I could do is I could provide style guidelines right and then I could say you know be witty um verbose um you know uh use lots of jargon um you know uh you know over explain um and make things up a lot right um and so obviously this is not what you would want but um you could use your style so you and and by the way um, if you're not sure how you would describe your style, all right, this is another way to use AI. So what I could do is take my writing sample, right? I can move that into Copilot. Okay, so let me uh, share the Copilot window again. Okay, uh, do, 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 and we'll go back to Copilot, and I will say, please describe this writing style. Paste it, and it's going to go ahead and describe that writing style. And then I could um, just basically take this and paste it into the writing style guide that I have. And you could provide lots of them and then say, please give me a summary of these writing styles. So you can use the AI to tell you the style of your writing and then feed that back into your prompt architecture um, to, to help it. All right. And you can see this is giving much kind of clearer things. OK. so. Um, Reasonably nice about my writing style. Nothing too insulting there. It's good. Yeah, was, okay. I was, I was <laughs> someone did ask for an image if we had time. And so I think since we have a minute, sure. they yeah. wanted um, an image for a STEM summer camp. All right. Any other details about this uh, STEM summer camp that they want? Get the name of the person if you're there. Oh, images for a STEM science camp for kids. So, and if let's see what it does. Through me an error. All right. Um, interesting. We can only generate image for users signing with a personal Microsoft account. Interesting. All right, let's refresh. Let's go back. Oh, you did you put it in creative? Although it does do it in balance. Yeah. It was making me images this whole time um, of a uh, STEM science. Camp. Yeah, science, oh, science. science camp for kids. Okay. Science camp for kids. Okay. See if it does it. Maybe Destiny is off, like implementing some of our new policies, Kim, and and just like disabled it in in a roundtable. Oh, no. uh, but hopefully it'll work. Yep, now it's doing it. Okay, that was just a hiccup. By the way, these large language models will hiccup a lot. Um, so if when in doubt, refresh, close the browser, start over. Um, nine times out of ten, it'll work fine the next time. 
Um, so Chris, are these are these going large again, Kim? Are, are they? They are. Okay. Um. So, uh, well, young kids, kids are depressingly happy. <laughs> wow. Uh, five to fourteen years old. Well, the name of the organization. That's where I'd see science fun for everyone. I might put that in with another tool because you could get some misspellings on what happened in there. It's, that's improving, but not perfect yet. Yeah, I can try it again. Um, science camp for kids called well, science fun science for everyone. Camp. Science so camp fun for everyone. Science fun for everyone. I feel like those kids were already really aggressively having fun. But uh, <laughs> much oh, we're over time. All right, sorry everybody. Um, I have to go actually because I have the three o'clock. Um, but uh, I'll wait till the image. But thank you everybody. Um, really appreciate the time from TechSoup. Um, Kim, of course, you're welcome to stay around. If, if they're staying around, I'm gonna have to jump. But here's our science fun for everyone. Yeah, uh, AIs are not great at spelling. Um, a wonderful. Uh, uh, right, another great um, uh, sub stack I recommend um, is Strapatech, and uh, I'll drop oh, this link in here. She actually was specifically, this is uh, Deb Stuligros, who's just a fantastic writer on AI, and she actually was just writing about improving spelling um, using uh, images. So thanks, everybody. I got to jump. I lost track of time. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, TechSoup. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you, TechSoup. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, Kim. All right. Okay. Um, did you want to take anything else or are we uh, good to wrap here, I think? I mean, I think we're good. Okay. Could, if someone has an urgent question, I'd be happy to take it, but. Yeah, I think um, the, just at this point, I think just following up with us um, for anyone that has additional questions, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I guess, and just toss my email in the chat. I've already actually received some emails from some folks, which is exciting. Um, be happy to uh, field anything um, as far as uh, with Kim and Josh um, and Roundtable. Um, certainly be able to communicate any information. I'm sure I'm guessing that's going to come out in the follow up email as well. A copy of this recording will be available uh, in the coming days. Just give us some time to edit it because um, you knew I was hosting it, that there was going to be some glitches. Um, so we're going to get those out. Um, uh as part uh, of this as well um, i'm assuming the uh, presentation deck will also be included uh, and there were some other items uh, that is, some people had asked for uh, to what degree that can accommodate those we'll certainly try so with that thank you very much everyone for joining us today uh, this morning this afternoon have a great rest of the week and we look forward to you joining us on another event